So the other component of the kit is, of course, the uh, Biohome Ultimate Media. Uh, I'm not sure how much this particular Eheim is going to hold, but we're going to bag up three kilograms, and we'll see if we need all that or whether it's going to take two or what. Um, but anyway, here we are weighing it out, and we'll finish packing it up. So here we've got it packed up uh, just the way we would pack it up for any other customer. As if we were going to ship it, of course, uh, we still have to put the filter starter balls inside the bag, like the label says, and we'll seal it up and it'll be ready to go. Okay, so the big day has arrived. We're here at Kevin's Genki Nishkigoi. I'm going to go inside now and see if we can fix that uh, filter up. All right. Uh, so here we are with Bill. He's going to uh, give me a hand with this. Uh, this is kind of his baby here, so I'll let him uh, explain what we've got here. Okay, my name is Bill Doherty with Genki Koi Incorporated. First off, we're going to add a different media to the filter. But first off, we have our sump here uh -huh. and a protein skimmer oh, yeah. and some Japanese filter mat. Okay. Then with the return back to the tank. And what we're going to be working on today is this Eheim filter replacing this media. And that's where we're about at right now. All so right. the next time you'll see us, we'll be replacing the media. Cool. So, Bill, uh, it looks like it looks like that's self-contained. Where, do, where does the water come into this Eheim from? Oh, I'm sorry. Basically, from the sump, uh -huh. we have the incoming right from the tank before this actually the same water that is taking into the protein skimmer uh -huh. is going into the Eheim filter through I got this you. guy. So some portion goes through the sump and some portion goes through the Eheim, is that kind of the way it works? Correct. And then we have the return from the Eheim filter into the sump. Oh, it goes back in there. back into the tank. I got you. Okay, that's interesting. All right. So basically 100% winds up going through the sump one way or another. One way or another. All, right, All cool. the water comes in from the tank yep. through this hose back here, drops into this chamber. Gotcha. And that's kind of a settlement chamber, chamber the, basically, huh? Yeah. Basic, and then the, the Eheim filter takes the water out. Yep. The sump removes the protein from it. Gotcha. Any water goes to the next chamber, uh -huh. gets filtered through the Japanese mat, and then is returned back to the tank. And this has the same return from the filter. Yep. So all water that's been filtered is put into this third chamber that returns back to the tank through this. Aha, uh -huh. I got you. So I'm curious. A lot of a lot of my customers have sumps, and frankly, I don't know much about them. Uh, does the water from that first section, which, like I say, looks to me like it's more or less a settlement section, uh, does that just get into the next section by going over that little wall? Is by going it? over, by creating this wall, the water is staying in this chamber a yeah. little bit longer. So it has time to go into the protein skimmer. So it takes any, any type of protein out of the water. And then the protein skimmer is dropping it into the next section where you have just the... Just back through this filter here. Uh -huh. Which is really nothing. And then it will automatically go into this chamber with the Japanese mats and okay. into the third chamber for return back to the tank. Okay, and then you've got a UV in there which you currently don't have on, it looks like, but uh, you've got a UV lamp, uh, or is that no, a heater? No, no, that, that is a heater. Ah, a heater, Because okay. sometimes we gotcha. want to, yeah, yeah. I mean, treat it for sure. whatever reason, we want to increase the, the sure, temperature. Sure, sure. But being indoors, this guy usually stays about 68 degrees anyhow, anyway, gotcha. even when it gets cold. Super, okay. Which is fine for koi. Okay, cool. So yeah, now uh, maybe you can just show me how we can shut this thing down and uh, you got it. get it out here so we can rebuild it. You got it. All right, man. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna need it. I'm gonna need a screwdriver. Oh, to pry it up to, a bit, yeah. Pry this up just. All right, we finally got the top off. It was quite a struggle. It's been a while, obviously, since this thing's been opened up. Uh, I saw on the uh, power head that it's a 2217, so I think we're going to need all three kilograms. Uh, so hopefully we can get the rest of this out of here and get this cleaned up, and we'll start putting the new stuff in. Okay, we finally got that thing out. 
Now Bill is going to rinse it out. It's kind of funky, so uh, we'll rinse it out a bit and uh, get it nice and clean. Thank you. You bet. Like a new, just like a new filter now. Okay. Looking good. Excellent. All right. All right. The next step is to rinse out the media. So if Bill will do the honors for me, we'll go ahead over and here. give that stuff a nice rinse. We just want to get all the dust and crap off it. That should do the trick, I think. Looking pretty good. Just make sure we get it all nice and clean. Alrighty. Very good. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Alright, so now the next step, well, now that we've got it cleaned out, we're going to add the mechanical filtration. Here we've got the uh, coarse, medium, and fine, and Bill's going to go ahead and put that down there on that uh, in the beginning or at the entrance of the uh, thing. And you see we've got it cut nice and snug, so it should should get everything pretty well. Just pat Super. it down. Alright, so let's go ahead the media. And, let's go ahead and fill it up with media. See how uh, see how well it does here with the 3 kg. It looks like we might have to get a little more, but we got plenty more where that came from, so if we do. Really good it's not stuff. A big deal. Good size. Especially for an aquarium. It's perfect. I don't want to pour it in there and break it. Yeah, well, it wouldn't hurt it to break it, but yeah, it's, it's easy to put in. One of our customers, actually, if, if uh, some of the other canister filters have, have uh, trays, and one of our customers actually did a real nice video where he... Uh, Broke it up? He, no, he demonstrated it by putting it in there nice and neat. Oh, you know, oh he, yeah, he stacked yeah, yeah. it in there on end, uh, and then actually topped it off uh, horizontally. He found he could get a lot more in that way than if he just poured it in. But oh, since, of course. Since this is one big open space, I think it makes more sense to just put it in there the way we're doing it. And uh, we're going to be You fairly, have a lot of air be, between them. Oh, yeah. There's It'll be really close. Oh, dropped one. I think we're going to be pretty close with uh, pretty close. 3 kg. I think that's what I figured for this size filter. But I've never actually done one, so that's part of the... The whole trick here is to uh, is to see That's really if close. this is the right amount or not, and it sure looks like it's going to be. I think it's perfect. 3 kg for a 2217. I got to go make sure my document says that because obviously that we got to have room for the power head. And actually, we got one more. Uh, uh, the plastic Panel. housing on top, yeah, which yeah, would yeah. actually be perfect. All right, man. Yeah, you want to go grab that quick? Sure. Now? Thanks. Yeah, we rinse that off. Kind of funky as well. And I realized I forgot one important step. So hang on just a sec, Bill. Pull okay. that, pull that baby back off of there. Okay. So that's uh, to to keep any media from getting up in the power head. But the part I missed uh, that's critical is. Can you take a couple hands full of that out and put it back in the blue, uh, our blue rinse basket there? Sure. All righty. So this is uh, a critical part of it. Every, uh, every shipment of the media comes with this stuff. And so here it is, the filter starter balls. Oh, so okay. If you just go ahead and open that up and kind of spread them around in there. Good beneficial bacteria. Yeah, absolutely, then, huh? yeah, absolutely. Okay, go ahead and put the media back in there then, and then we can uh, we can cover it up and <laughs> we see if we have better luck putting it back together. I'm sure we will. Than we did when we took it apart. 
Outstanding. And put the cover on. Like so. so we suction it, does it pull it back? Okay. Get clogged. There we are, huh? We should be right and off to the races. Alright. Let's see if we can get it back. So now we got a bag in operation. Putting that thing back together was almost as much fun as taking it apart. Almost. But, uh, now we got water circulating through there. You can maybe make it out. As it bubbles around the media there. But everything looks okay. Oh yeah, there we can see a few bubbles coming through. So we will see how it works. Hopefully real well. But Hopefully real well. I will tell. I'm not sure we're actually going to see much that we can see visually, but uh, I'll come back tomorrow and see if I can get a water reading and then we'll see how that goes over the time. Sounds so, good. All right. Well, thank you, Bill. You're very welcome, Don. Very, and, very welcome. Uh, yeah, the story continues. Yes. So the filter's been uh, operating now for just, uh, just about a day and I took some measurements here to see how things are are looking and to compare with later results uh, looking real good we got uh, zero ammonia zero nitrite we've got about 80 nitrate and the pH is right at 8 so those are pretty decent readings and we'll see if we can get that nitrate down over time uh, that'll be uh, one oh, of the yeah, keys all right we're back at uh, Genki Koi again today it's the uh, 28th Saturday of March uh, we've got a few more fish not a real heavy load in here yet but we got a few more koi in here so I'm going to take some more water readings and then we'll check back and see uh, how things are developing here so far so good though